It is Margaret, Texas Gal Treasures, and in this video I'll be showing you all the different ways to test amber to make sure that it is real amber and not a fake or an alternative or another substance. So let's get started. All right, so the first method and probably one of the least intrusive methods is the UV test. And I recorded this bit yesterday, so in just a moment I'll switch over and there'll be a little clip of me in the closet with lots of bits of amber. But, so what you need for the UV test is a UV flashlight or some sort of UV light. Uh, and I learned the hard way, protect your eyes. So get some sunglasses that are UV protected or glasses that are UV protected uh, because I did have a bit of a sunspot yesterday and then went back and was researching it and I only found one site that gave the warning. Be careful. I mean, it should be like obvious, but apparently it wasn't obvious, not to me. So I am putting it out there. Protect your eyes because it is a UV light, right? <laughs> anyway, so I, um, yeah, I'll give you that tip. So. Real amber under a UV light will fluoresce. Now, some pieces fluoresce more than others, and depending on the type of amber, it will um, maybe be a different shade or color. And from the research that I did, I saw that amber could fluoresce anywhere from a, like a yellow-green color to a blue color. So it could be yellow-green, could be green, could be blue. Um, and so also I found out that copal, which is an immature tree resin. It's still an old tree resin and it's very similar to amber, but it's not amber um, for many reasons, which I've mentioned in another post. They, copal, in a few posts that I read, can fluoresce, it said. It doesn't always, but if it does, it might be like a, a white, a whiter shade um, because it just depends on the age because copal could be anywhere from a thousand years old to a million years old, but it's still not as old as true amber. Okay, so here's the video of me checking out the jewelry and the bits that I've got for amber. Okay, so I'm here in my closet and I've got this tub full of what I think to be lucite or plastic. I've got amber, maybe amber earrings, some other bits that I think are lucite or just plastic. Um, and then this is all from, I think this is all going to be amber, just raw amber from that garage sale I got with all the drawers. Um, some of them I'm not sure, but it was even labeled amber. I mean, that doesn't mean anything, but anyway, labeled amber. And then here, again, some more bits. This was a necklace that I picked up that I'm guessing is not going to be real amber. Then these, which are, I know are not amber, but they are amber colored. So I thought I would show them as well. And then these I th think are, um, I think that's Alexandrite, but I wanted to share it anyway, just in case whatever came up. And then over here, I've got these maybe amber earrings and pendants, maybe. And in here, some other bits. This is I, what I think is plastic. And then there are some beads here that I believe to be glass. They're really heavy. They sound like glass. They sound like marbles when I clink them together. And those are not amber. And then over here, some of these are mine. So this is mine. That's like a green amber. And this is another pair of earrings of mine that has got the three different colors of amber in there. What else have I got? And then I had a pair of earrings like this that were uh, amber looking. Anyway, here we go. There they are. And then another amber. There was a ring as well. Okay, well, anyway, I've got tons of stuff. I'm going to lay it all out on the floor, um, and then we will pull out the black lights, turn off the lights, and see what we see. Okay, just to start, I have everything on the floor, and we're about to turn the lights out and get a good shot from up above. Here it goes. So we can see if there's anything glowing. All right, let's bring it in closer and see what we're looking at. Some things have a bit of a sheen when I go over them. Some things, a little bit. Some things, a lot. There's a lot of green in there. Kind of greeny. Oh, that over there is the bone. <laughs> so these bits that are glowing over here, those are bits of uh, bone. So <laughs> that doesn't count. All right, so bring it in over here. I see a piece there. 
that is definitely fluorescing and it's hard to tell. All right, so I'm gonna turn off this flashlight, the UV, and turn on the little flashlight so we can see what it looks like under a regular flashlight. So this piece here looks like that under the UV light. And then you can see these pieces all here are also casting a bit of a glow. They're not just staying flat and normal. They're turning kind of a yellow. So I'm gonna turn on the regular flashlight so you can see that they're not actually yellow. See, those are bits of amber there. Now I think those red ones in the back, those ones, Let's take a look at those again, because I thought those were maybe like garnet beads, but there is a bit of a fluoresce to them. Do you see how they're kind of turning yellow? So there might be, yeah, see, they're turning yellow. Okay, then this one, you can see there's nothing. There's no change. Okay, moving on. So here we've got this container that is what I thought was raw amber, and you can see how these big chunks and little bits are fluorescing yellow and maybe a little bit of blue in there. You see the blue, bluish? I'm gonna take out some of the bigger pieces, hang on. Here's what it looks like under the regular light. So let me take out this one. Let me put it, I'm gonna put it over here. These two, like that. And then this big button looking bead. Okay, so I'm gonna shine the black light, the UV light back in here again to show you. So it looks like we see a lot of yellowy, I think the blue is the carpet underneath, except for that one has kind of got a blue. So I think that's all just raw amber in there. Now, these pieces. So these two, I do not think, this one you can see, it is fluorescing under all those cracks. And then this one is unusual, look. It's got, look. It looks like, I mean, this is possibly pressed amber with something else because it's got some fluorescing in there unless it is another material so we'll have to find out about that as well that has that that's interesting it may be something completely else so we'll find out but that i'm almost certain is amber okay cool let's move on well i'm going to show you them again with the uh, regular light that's what they look like if my regular flashlight were working better under the regular flashlight. So next we'll go through these jewelry pieces along here. So first up, not amber. Second, now this is something I did not think was really amber, but it has a bit of a fluoresce to it. Can you see that? All right, so I'm gonna look into that a little closer. I It might just be, I don't know. So we'll have to check it using another method because I, I see a little bit of a fluoresce to them, but not, not a lot, but a little bit. Let's see with the regular light. We'll see. Let me hold it up higher. No, I mean, not really. When I hold it down low, there's kind of a little bit, but. Okay, so next, those ones look for sure like they are fluorescing. I'm trying to compare the two. Hmm, we'll see. Okay, then coming over here, whoa. All right, so now this is an earring that I was certain was um, plastic. So I'm gonna have to look into that because it is a Napier earring and I, I was just certain it was plastic. Now, I don't know what's going on with that orange. Look at that orange and that yellow. So I'm wondering also if those things, cause those, when I tap them together, they sound like glass. So we will double check those here. I'll show you with the regular light. That's what they look like. This is the one that was bright yellow and this is the one that was bright orange. And then this was not fluorescing the little ball and then that one was. Let's look again. Crazy. So I'm gonna look at those two. I, I think they're just some, they're treated or something like that. But then this one is, is causing me, whoa, I thought it was plastic. Okay, and then some earrings here, yes. They are fluorescing. And then these beads are not. See, sometimes I have to pull back to get a good look at it to tell. Then these ones, yes, the ring is. These ones, yes, they are. Yes. How about that one? Nope. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. 
So some of these we've got to do another method on because curious and that's bone in there. See. All right, so the next test that you'll probably do when you're out and you're feeling amber, you're picking it up or you've got jewelry, you're picking up trying to determine whether or not it is amber is the touch test. So amber will be more lightweight than say glass. Um, so if I were picking up this piece, it would feel lighter than it looks. It almost feels like, like a plastic. So it's very lightweight. And also when you feel it, it might feel more room temperature or even maybe a little warm to the touch as opposed to glass. And I'm just guessing that these are glass. Um, whereas glass is a bit harder and cooler to the touch when I'm feeling them. Um, whoops, there goes that one. Also, when you tap them together, I'm going to show you the difference. So I'm going to tap these two bits of amber together. And they, you know, these ones sound pretty hard. But then listen to the difference when you tap something that maybe is a glass. It's a bit higher pitched. So that's something else you can do um, if, you, if you'd be able to distinguish that when you're out and about. So the tap test and feeling it and the weight, okay? So the next test that you can do to determine if your piece is amber is the acetone or alcohol test. Uh, and this one, can damage the piece. So you want to find either a spot on the piece that you're think that you think won't be noticed um, or just I don't know, avoid it um, unless you really really just have to. Um, true amber won't be affected. The alcohol acetone will evaporate off and won't affect the piece whereas copal or plastics um, will become sticky or tacky where that uh, acetone or alcohol has touched it. I have some here, but we'll see in a little bit if I'm gonna try it or not, because I'm not sure. So another test you can do to check to see if your piece is amber is the scratch test. This is another test that will damage the piece. Um, so you would take a bit of metal and you would scratch at it and it would, because amber is softer than glass, say, the amber would have a scratch mark on it. Now, glass can scratch too. So this is where I'm a little hesitant. Plastic, I mean, you would have to scratch harder for glass for sure, but plastic will scratch and copal will scratch. So it's not foolproof. So the next test is the salt water test. And I am looking forward to doing this one. I have my bowl of salt water here and I put in a lot of salt because somebody in jewelry lovers and sellers um, said that they did this test and that they needed a lot of salt to make it float. So I have my salt water. I'm going to do a few pieces. Now, if your piece is set in metal, it's not going to float because that metal is going to sink that baby. But I have some pieces that fluoresced. So we watched the video and these were some that fluoresced kind of crazy colors, like really bright, and I think they might have been treated. So before I, before I drop those in though, I wanna get a piece that I'm pretty sure is amber. We had all these little bits that we think are raw amber. So I'm gonna drop them in and see if it floats, there it goes. All right, then we have this big piece. Let's drop it in. Yep, up it floats. Now there was this one that I think it had some substance in it, but it fluoresced as well. Nope, that sank like a... Now this one is a... It's got some metal in there, so that won't work. See, it won't work if it's set in something. I can't remember if this one fluoresced or not. I think that's glass, though. Let's drop it in. Yep, sank like a stone. Okay, some more of these little bits. Let me see. There it goes. Let me find a spot where you can see it better. Up they go. Are they coming back up? That one's coming up. That one's staying down. Now, I also read that copal can float too. So this is also not foolproof as far as copal goes. So there's those. Let's see if I have anything else that's not set in metal. Oh yeah, I was gonna do these. All right, first up, let's see. Oh yeah, sink like a rock. This one, totally. And then this one is set in metal, so I'm pretty sure that, yeah, it's not gonna. So this one is a, what I believed to be not 
amber because it's a Napier earring. I know it's set in metal, but I'm going to drop it in. No, yeah, it's just, it's metal. So of course it's not going to float, Margaret. Oh my gosh, don't be silly. Um, and then these ones, I don't know. They're not going to float. They're not going to, because they're, well, I thought maybe because they were <laughs> tied together with like a string, maybe they'd, maybe they'd give me, cut me a break. I guess I could cut that necklace apart. No, I'm not going to do that. Okay, so we can see that the amber is floating and that the ones that are not amber are not floating. Okay, there's those. So the next test is the rub or static test. True amber has an electrostatic charge. And what this means is that if you rub it um, along a piece of cotton fabric for a while, <laughs> warm it up, that it should produce a bit of a static charge that would move, say, a piece of hair, like, like you would with a balloon, you know, rubbing a balloon and then holding it up to some confetti or some little bits of paper. So we're going to try it with this piece that I believe to be amber, and let's see how it goes. I'm going to rub it on my cotton napkin here. Let me get my bits of paper to you. I'm rubbing it. Also, when I smell it, we'll talk about that in a second, but there, there's a smell to it. It's almost a sweet smell. Look, there it is. It's working. I'm going to do it again. Do it again, do it again. Yeah, I wish you could smell it. I, I don't have smell a vision but it's got this kind of a sweet resin smell to it. See, it's static cling. I wonder if it'll work on my hair. Yeah, I wish you could smell that. And there's not, it's not damaging the piece at all. It's not creating any problems on the piece. Let me see if I can get my hair to, to move. There we go. You see it grabbing a, a couple pieces of my hair? There we go. Phew! Yeah, it's got like a sweet, sweet resin smell. So that is the rub static test. Cool, yay! Um, I'm going to try it with this one. That it, it fluoresced a bit in there, but I'm pretty sure that this is like a plastic or a lucite. I'm not, it's not picking anything up. But it does... It has a slight fragrance like the other one, but it's not nearly as strong. So part of me wonders... If it's like, because some of the some of the pieces that we that I read about that I shared in the other um, post was that sometimes there's copal mixed with plastic. So I'm wondering if that's what this is because it did have a bit of a fluoresce when we put the black light on it, UV light, and it does have a very very slight smell. So I'm wondering if somebody did the test on it too. Because look right there. I don't know if you can see that that divot in there. I'm wondering if somebody poked it with a hot something to try to test it out. All right, so this piece that I, I can't make out because it did fluoresce, and of course I can't float it because of the metal, I'm going to try it with the rub test with the static and see how it does. So, curious. These ones did, so let's try the electrostatic on this one. Look at that. Oh, that's wild. It just picked it right on up. So there were a couple pieces that I don't think are 100% true amber, but I think they might be copal, maybe mixed with plastic, which is something that I saw um, is out there. Um, from when I was researching. So this piece, you know, there, it had some fluorescent to it, um, but then again, there are other things that can fluoresce. So I will just probably include that in my listing and say, you know, not certain, might be this, you know, and probably even show a picture of it in the UV light so that probably somebody who knows a little more might be able to determine. Um, same thing with this one. When I, I, when I rub it, it definitely has that kind of sweet smell. So, I mean, the, the jury is out. It, it definitely fluoresced under the light. 
But again, I need to find out, like, are there certain kinds of plastics that will also fluoresce? Um, I think there might be, but it did have that very slightly, same with this one, very slightly sweet smell like the amber did. So that is something that we're going to have to continue learning about. All right, so next week, I'm going to be listing these things, so I will have a post about how to list whether it's true amber or whether it is uh, an alternative and uh, how you go about making sure that you are being as accurate as possible when listing your pieces. Thanks so much, you guys. I hope you found this helpful. Talk to you later. Bye.